Hi there photo fans, it's James Sapphire again from Sapphire Photography UK. We haven't done a video for a while, we've been very busy shooting weddings in Italy and upgrading our equipment. I've now got a Canon 6D, recently Kerry kindly got me for Christmas a 50mm f1.4. We've also upgraded our zoom lens, we've ditched the old 70 to 300 f4 to f5.6. Now I've got the Canon 70 to 200 f4. Now what that means is it doesn't matter if I'm starting at 70 or up to 200, it will remain at f4. But obviously we can change that if we want to have a longer exposure. Now today we're going to be heading over to Crystal Palace. So without further ado, let's get on the train and head on over. Here we are at Crystal Palace Park. Now it's very low light here because of the time of year being during the winter times. And there's a lot of um, squirrels, nature around. And what I want to mainly do for today's episode is, because I've got an f1.4 lens, I want to explain to you about aperture. So we're going to have a look around the park, find a nice subject that we can use, and I'm going to show you what the difference is between using your, picture, your photos, starting at say f9, and working our way to f1.4. So let's have a look around the park and see what's around. We've arrived at one of the lakes here at Crystal Palace. Now what I'm going to do to show you an example of using depth of field, is I'm going to first of all start taking a picture at f9. I'm just going to take a picture of a leaf and with that you'll be able to see that the little background may be a little bit blurry. So I'll just get a shot of that now. So as you could see from that shot, that was done at f9 and the background was slightly blurry. So in order to make that background not blurry, you would therefore put your f number to f11 and so forth. Now the next shot I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking at f2.8 and you can be able to see now that the background on that will be even more blown out. As you could have seen from that shot, the background was completely blown out and the bokeh was absolutely beautiful. And if you like that kind of shot, then that's great. Now I'm going to take one final shot at f1.4. Now during this time of year, the sun doesn't get that high. At the moment, it's around three o'clock. And as you can see, there's a lovely golden aura around me. And that's what people relate to as the golden hour. So Kerry's gonna use my 60. I've got the 70 to 200. She's gonna be taking it F4. And you focus on the eye of the subject and recompose. And what you'll see is a lovely, dreamy, golden hour moment. Now when taking portraits, one of the most common things that people do is that they think that having the sun on their subject's face is the best thing because of the hard light. Well in fact that's wrong and I'm going to show you why. Okay now you can see from that horrible shot that I was frowning because the sun was smack on my face. Now remember when you're doing a portrait shot, have the sun behind your subject and if you're shooting in manual mode, get the correct exposure on the subject. If you still want to get the background for the blue sky, for example, still to be at the right exposure, then when you're in manual mode, you want to ensure you've got the correct exposure for the sky and you'd use a flash to compensate me because I will be dark. Well, I hope you learned something from that. We're now going to head over to a small farm in the area. I'm going to stick with the 70 to 200, get a few fun shots and see how they come out. Don't forget to check out our website at sapphirephotographyuk.co.uk and we've got our own Facebook page too at Sapphire Photography UK. Take care.